Hey there everyone, Dr. Beth Westy here, and I wanted to pop on and talk about why you may get bloated after eating. Now, a lot of people have digestive issues, discomfort, um, you know, whether it be heartburn, indigestion, diarrhea, constipation, all these other things, right? A ton of things can go wrong. Sometimes it's really easy to link it to, oh my gosh, I ate this food. I'm not feeling good. I have been feeling sick or I've been stressed. Of course, my stomach is more sensitive, right? Okay, sure. But if you're somebody who's thinking, gosh, every time I eat, I feel bloated. Every time I eat, it doesn't matter what I eat. I'm eating healthy and clean and I get bloated. I eat garbage and I get bloated. I don't know what to do here. What's happening? Where do I go? <laughs> what do I do next? And really it comes down to a fact of it's not necessarily then so much about what it is that you're eating, but how your digestive system functions what's happening and how well it's working. Cause it's not, it's not working well. <laughs> so a lot of times when I work on educating women, really we start with function. How does your body function and work? What is your physiology, right? So if we're working with how your system functions and how your natural system works, then it's really easy to line up and match with that to make progress in any direction. You can try and pick out foods or do an expensive elimination diet. You can try a ton of supplements and try and add a bunch of things in. But if you're missing some of the basic components that should be there as a foundation for your health, you're never gonna make progress with all this other stuff. Yeah, yeah. So when we look at function, when we look at where to start, oh my gosh, I get bloated after eating all the time. I wake up in the morning, my stomach feels flat, because you haven't eaten and your digestive system has been resting, yes. And then I eat and holy crap, I just get bloated. Ugh, ugh. And as the day goes on, I get more and more bloated. Ugh. You might be so used to it that you don't even recognize the discomfort that comes along with it. Sometimes you may notice it, sometimes you may not. But that's beside the point. If you feel like your stomach is just ballooning out and not working correctly, there's something wrong. So here are some of the basic things that need to happen in your system so that you're actually digesting your food correctly. If you're not breaking down and digesting your food correctly, you're not absorbing all the nutrients from the food you're eating. Again, you can be eating the cleanest diet ever. Super clean, super pristine, super perfect, blah, blah, blah. But if you're getting bloated all the time, you're not actually getting those nutrients, right? It's like buying super great lotion, like, oh, I'm gonna help all these wrinkles. I don't, I don't really care about wrinkles, but just as an example, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do all this great stuff, buy this fancy lotion, it's gonna be fantastic. And then you put saran wrap on your skin and try and put the lotion on. You're not getting it, it's not coming through, it's not happening, rah. This is what the same, this is what this is. You're not actually getting, absorbing, processing, digesting, metabolizing those nutrients because your gut is just pissed off, essentially. So things that need to happen for proper digestion to make sure you're not getting bloated. You need to have bacteria, fiber, enzymes, and motility. Maybe this is hard to see. So I'm gonna chunk this off. You need to have bacteria here, fiber, and this is not the prettiest drawing I've ever done. But again, you guys aren't here for my art skills, hopefully. <laughs> if you are, you're probably disappointed. Look at these weird squares. Hmm, yes. Um, you need to have bacteria, fiber, enzymes, and motility. So bacteria were most often, uh, these are the four main things to, to really take care of for digestion. You need to have healthy bacteria. You have, you know, it should be a good balance. There's good bacteria and bad bacteria. So what's really interesting is when they've done studies in terms of increased stress in the environment or that you're exposed to all that stuff, you have an increase in bacteria in your gut. It's just an increase of the bad bacteria that then throws off the good bacteria leading to bloat, leading to digestive issues, right? Again, leading to you not absorbing all your food and nutrients the way that you should, leading to slowing down metabolism, and the myriad of you know problems downstream that happen from there. This is an upstream issue, right? Problems up here, upstream with bloat and all that other stuff can trickle down and branch off in other areas in terms of, oh, it's gonna go to metabolism, it's gonna go to fatigue, it's gonna go to messing up your sleep. Yes, that's all a thing. So realize this is a very upstream thing that we're talking about right now. So bacteria, really, really important to have a good balance of the bacteria and good bacteria in your system. Now, how do you help that? Probiotic. Great. 
Super easy, right? Take a good probiotic, super duper. You can also get probiotics from your food, kombucha, kimchi, fermented foods, all that stuff. You can do it yourself. That's a very cost-effective way to do it, although time-consuming. <laughs> I used to make my own kombucha and I was a little bit obsessed with it and then I had to stop. <laughs> um, Ooh, yes, Sonia, good question. Good suggestions for a quality probiotic, pre prebiotic, and digestive enzyme. Um, yes, so we'll, I'll talk about brands of stuff as we, as we go along. So essentially for bacteria, you want a good probiotic. The best probiotics that you're going to get are need to be alive. In foods is a really natural way to do that. Sauerkraut. Lots of good bacteria in there. That's how it's made, right? So if you're going to actually add a probiotic, some of the best probiotics are found in a refrigerator or you have to purchase a high quality one. When we talk about purchasing supplements anytime, and I'll do a whole nother video on that if you guys want, um, you get what you pay for. Buying something on sale, please don't do it. It's not worth it. It's more valuable for you to get your probiotic from food. I'd rather you buy a jar of sauerkraut at the store and eat some every day to get probiotic than get a crappy probiotic supplement. Yeah, because that live sauerkraut is going to do more than getting a piece of crap probiotic supplement. I found it on sale at Walmart. Please don't. Just don't. <laughs> don't. Don't. Uh, but that's a big piece here. Bacteria having the right balance and getting those probiotics in helps your system have a positive balance of the good and bad bacteria, essentially. Um, Yes, but again, you can get this from foods, things like that. Fiber, prebiotic is what it's called. That's the same thing. Potato, potato, fiber, right? It's, it's like the leafy stuff, right? It, that's, that's what it is. So a lot of people think, I, I need more fiber. I have to take some fiber. I take a Metamucil. I take a something, right, to help move things through, if you know what I mean. Yes, mm-hmm. With fiber, you have to make sure that you're not causing more disruption than good. So fiber is in things like leafy greens. But if you are having a lot of digestive discomfort, sometimes eating a big salad is actually going to make it worse. So breaking down the fiber somehow is really, really helpful. So for example, instead of eating a big fresh greens salad, you're actually going to have to wilt the leaves break it down with heat. That means that your system can process and digest and actually use the fibers that are in there. Um, sometimes fibers can help you go to the bathroom, but they can also make you bloat it. So getting your fibers from foods is preferred versus a supplement. It's more bioavailable for your system, but you may have to break it down with heat or something like that, right? So there is, there is that as well. And that, that's my preferred way to do it is actually through food, not necessarily through a supplement of some kind. Enzymes, digestive enzymes. Now there's, these are across the board. You can get a papaya enzyme that's chewable. That can be helpful. It's a mild way to get enzymes in. Um, but again, there's whole food ways of doing this. Apple cider vinegar, apple cider vinegar. So I'm just gonna write down examples. These are whole food examples. Um, I'll put kombucha here because I feel like people are more likely to drink kombucha than eat a bunch of sauerkraut every day because <laughs> kombucha can be flavored in a delicious way. Yes. Um, fiber. So I'm going to say, um, wilt, uh, leaves here. This one, we're going to do apple cider vinegar. Lots. I mean, there is some probiotic in here too, but apple cider vinegar, great digestive enzyme capability here. You can do a shot of it. You can mix it with water. Um, I like to have a little bit of honey. I'll show you, I'll, I'll do a story on this tomorrow morning. I'll show you my morning drink and how I prep it um, and everything tomorrow morning to make it really palatable and not terrible, <laughs> essentially. Um, so that's a great way to get enzymes in. These digestive enzymes help, again, break down the food. There's a, there's a whole process of taking the food that you eat, your system, it's amazing. Your system takes a chunk of something and is able to process it, break it down, you know, have all this stuff happen to it 
where all of a sudden it's like, oh, these tiny little molecules of nutrient. Oh, thank you. I'm going to use it. Mm. It's an amazing process. And then whatever it doesn't want, it's like out the other end. But if it's irritated, if that whole, if your digestive system is irritated, if it's not releasing the digestive enzymes because you're under stress, because you've eaten artificial colors, sweeteners, all these other things, it can really destroy how well these things are processed. That's a big deal. That's a really, really big deal. Um, so having this in makes a big difference with helping your system produce better. So this is not about, by, by getting these things in, it's not like, oh, I'm not going to get this from my food. You wanna help teach your system to have more healthy balance of bacteria to have that fiber uh, you know, move through your system, to have more digestive enzymes be released. That's the goal. The goal is not to have all these supplements kind of do things for you with your gut health. If you need that, there may be a point of gut healing and, and going through a gut protocol, leaky gut, that's a whole different thing than what I'm talking about here. Um, but just having some bloat, if you're like, ugh, what the heck? Sugar is also a big thing that causes a lot of bloat regularly. If you have a, a sugar imbalance, meaning again, a lot of times it comes back to the bacteria and enzymes that are naturally released every day in your gut. Um, oh, so there's a question. Should apple cider vinegar ever be taken after you eat or it's before better? Um, this is typically before it's better because it's activating your system. It's waking it up and saying, hello, Food is coming, time to break it down, let it do its thing. I'm sure it sings like that too, but that's what it does. You can take it after, right? So if you eat food and then take it after, sure. Like sometimes when I'm taking apple cider vinegar with dinner, if I start eating and I'm like, shoot, I didn't do my apple cider vinegar, I'll go have my apple cider vinegar and then finish dinner, right? It's all gonna go in your stomach and kind of mix up there. So if you take it, right after eating, is it that different than taking it right before? Meh, right? Because it goes through this whole churning process in your stomach. But again, the goal is, is that as you digest, it activates and, and it helps your system break things down better. Which brings me to my last piece. But if you, if you notice, I mean, this could be something you can play around with, having it before versus having it after. Most people notice more of a benefit when they have it before. But to have it during or after, is that wrong necessarily? No. Because again, overall, it's the impression you're giving your system overall of helping encourage digestive, the, di the digestive process to happen. Last piece is motility. Yeah, yeah. Your gut like squeezes things through, like squeezing out toothpaste, right? If you're gonna squeeze all the toothpaste out, that's how you wanna move things through. It's like this whole process, right? I grew up on a goat farm. So milking goats or cows or something, right? You gotta squeeze it there. Same process that happens in the gut and in the intestines and all those things. I mean, how do you think stuff travels all the way through there? It's not like, you know, other stuff. It's like your stomach does it. It's so cool. But if for some reason motility is lacking, right? And that can be from a myriad of reasons. If you have inflammation in your system, scar tissue, for some women they have, you know, uh, reproductive issues and there's scar tissue or endometriosis around the reproductive organs, which are right next to your digestive organs, it can interfere with a lot of these things. So what's a great way to do that? Just doing some massage, doing some soft tissue work to help encourage that digestive system to keep things moving through. These are very, very basic things that I guarantee there's, these are really, very inexpensive ways to start to improve your gut health, to help with the bloat, to make sure that you are seeing progress. So if you have bloat every time you eat, you might need to go through this list every time you eat until your digestive system picks up the pace. Yeah. Is it going to have to do that forever? I mean, hopefully not, but give yourself a timeline of, okay, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this for this week and let's see how it goes. Every time I eat, I'm going to get in a little bit of kombucha or something. I'm going to make sure my fiber is broken down, right? I'm wilting my leaves. I'm breaking that down. I'm getting in some apple cider vinegar with little, like a little bit, like a tablespoon or something every time I eat. Maybe in my water glass, fine. And then I'm just going to rub my belly. Rub my belly, right? Rub my belly around. If this is your, I'll draw the picture, I know. <laughs> You're not here for my art skills. If this is, right, this is a person without a head, right? 
this is the belly. This looks like a baby. That's the belly button. You want to go up, around, and down like this. Up, around, and down. That's the that's the direction. Start on your right lower side, up, around, to the up, across, right to left, and then down. Unless you have reverse organs, which is very rare. <laughs> but then that helps it go down and that helps stimulate and move things through. Um, there's some stretches, some yoga poses, some twisting, right? Even just sitting in twisting poses that help to move things through your middle. And it might feel really uncomfortable if you're like, gosh, I bloated. Oh, why would I wanna just sit and like do a, a gentle yoga twist? Oh, that feels terrible. Yeah, cause it's helping move things through. <laughs> So not something to be really aggressive about. This is a very gentle, like, okay, light flushing or doing dry brushing on your abdomen that can help move things through as well. Um, this is a, you know, don't push on it harder than you would, you know, push on your eyeball necessarily. You don't need to like dig, dig in your gut because that's also not going to help. But that's a great way to start. Again, every time you eat, go through and do this. Try it for a week. See how you feel. If you're like, God, that was really good. I want to go. I want to do it for another week. Great. Great. The goal is not that you would have to do this all the time, though. The goal is that your gut would actually get healthier, stronger. It would stop getting bloated all the time. And that you could go down to doing this just once a day, you know, and then maintenance from there on out whenever you need it. Yeah. Meaning maintenance. Okay. Oh, I'm having a really stressful week here. I should up my protocol when I'm doing this, that's going to help me maintain positive results. So I'm not taking steps backwards. Yeah. That's another thing I think we get, you know, forget about is that, Oh, if I feel good all the time, I have to do things to stay there. And if something else changes in my life, like my stress levels, or I'm not exercising as much or all these other things, because exercise also helps keep your digestive system moving. Um, then you're going to need to shift your daily protocol to stay at that level. You might need a little bit more maintenance, a little bit more whatever to stay at that level. Otherwise you'll start to slide back. So, okay. That's a lot of info that we went through on these four sort of basic things. But again, this is very basic. This is a foundational thing from here. We look at, okay, uh, food sensitivities, allergies, irritations, leaky gut, all that stuff on top of it. So if you've got more questions on that, please let me know and I can do more videos on it. Um, or if there's other information that I've talked about where you're like, hey, do a video on this, you can comment below, you can send me a message. I'm totally open to giving you guys the info you need to really make these changes in your health. I mean, my mission is to educate women so you can make these changes and start seeing results a lot faster. But if you need help, if you're like, okay, I need something laid out for me, I need something built for me, a custom protocol, I do work with women in a one-on-one -on -one setting. I have a couple more slots open to work with women. Um, so I will put a link right here where you can fill out some information and learn more about how that looks. Um, because there's, there's a lot of different ways to do this and everybody's at a different level. So if you're like, I need something specific for me, absolutely. That's where you can learn more about that. Um, Angela Johnson, would this be a good thing to do the week of or just prior to the time of the month, especially? Ooh, yes. Excellent question. And absolutely. This is something that I teach women how to do. So I have more info in my book on this, the female fat solution. This is on Amazon. I talk about nutrition that matches your hormones in your cycle, but also specific things like this that you add in at certain times of the month because that week before your period starts, especially your system slows down. It just does. So you're more likely to feel bloated and most of the days for that week or two before your period starts. So adding this in more is going to be helpful. And this is something I, I teach women how to do. I do myself. Yep. When I'm at that certain time frame, I need to make sure I'm getting in extra probiotics. If I need extra enzymes, extra, you know, massage work on my belly as needed. And it's so much easier again to maintain that little shift that's different than have to, Oh my gosh, it's so terrible. I got to start from scratch. Nope. I've already done so much work. So I just got to keep it going. Yeah. Excellent question though. Excellent question. Yeah. All right. Other resources that I have for you guys. Uh, my YouTube channel is just called Dr. Beth Westy. You can subscribe to that. I do a ton of videos and they're on all different topics, health for women. So if you're looking for something, go there, search for it. You're probably going to find it. If you don't find it, let me know and I will do a video on it. Um, and then my podcast is called the female health solution. 
I not only put out more information and content there, but I also have a lot of fantastic interviews with other women, real people, health experts, everything for you to just keep consuming and stay engaged in this. If you're on a path where you're like, okay, I'm trying to make this change, I'm trying to make this work, I'm trying to move forward with this, it's all about immersion. How many different ways, you might be like, that's a lot of ways to consume info, yes! book and video and podcast and all the things that way the more places you can get great info and keep hearing these messages the easier it is to just start integrating some of these changes right and and here's the other thing too if you're looking at this and saying okay well you know what maybe I can start with two of these things is that is that even worth it yes yes you don't have to be perfect on all of it all the time if you can integrate okay I'm gonna drink some kombucha and I'm gonna rub my tummy. Great, that is a fantastic place to start. Fantastic place to start. Yeah, do that. You're gonna notice an improvement. You're gonna notice a difference. Absolutely. And then from there, if you're like, well, maybe I'll, I'll look at wilting my, you know, and, and, and getting more prebiotic, more fiber. I'll get more fiber and I'll break it down more. Maybe that'll help, absolutely. Layer in these things, right? It's not about like jumping in and trying to shift things all at once. And if you don't do it perfect, then it's not worth it all, right? We're so much pressured so much on like, if it's not absolutely perfect, then why bother? No, do what you can, start with what you can, make an improvement and you'll notice that change and keep going with it. So, all right, that's what I got for you guys tonight. Please let me know if you have any other questions. Um, thank you for tuning in. If you found this helpful or if you know of somebody who needs this information, please, please, please share this with them because so many more people need this information um, because we, we're, it's not talked about. It's just not talked about. So, all right, I hope you have a great rest of your night. I will see you guys later.